Today we are back with the Webasto Arduino shower. Uh, here's it and it's set up. Uh, well, for those of you who haven't seen it before, let me take you through it once again, just to show you the things. A uh, laptop that's uh, running the monitoring and the code. Here we have a Webasto Thermotop V, which this one was uh, recovered from a Jaguar, I think it was, a Jaguar. Uh, my exhaust arrived burst. This is one of the exhausts of the old, no, the other Chinese diesel heaters I've just put on there. That's the original silencer just dangling there. This little sensor poked in here just now is our current exhaust temperature sensor. This will change very soon as we've ordered a newer higher temperature sensor. It takes the water temperature readings from the original temperature sensor in the Webasto, which is one of these two, I think it's that one. That one's an overheat sensor that we're not using yet. Uh, this is our board. On the board is the little Arduino. Huh. A new five volt power supply that I've not managed to kill yet, which is very impressive. Uh, MOSFETs, resistors, and behind a cable tie you can't see. Diodes for, well, flyback diodes for the fans and things and just general safety. Uh, connections out to all the things, glow plug, fan, water pump and fuel pump. That's the back of my 50 amp 12 volt power supply. And there's a button on this switch here. It's just a toggle button to toggle it on and off. Fuel pump is down there in the pink thing and there's what's left of my diesel. That should be enough to run to this morning. Oh, and the 60 litre water tank in it that's probably got about 50 litres in it. Some hose, water pumps down the back. It's down there. Water pump, water pump out to the shower head, which is poking outside, pointed mostly at the cross dresser. Uh, sea crosser, I didn't say that. Please don't demonetize me. Right, so well, without further ado, let me poke you back on the tripod. And I will fire it up. Once I step over the hose, oh god, please don't wreck everything just yet. Alright, I've got a screen capture running and I'm going to record the output from the uh, zero monitor, which I'll put on the screen down the bottom somewhere so you can watch it scroll past as it goes. Let me start recording. I believe it started recording and let me put it so I can see it. And it's a matter of pressing the button and watching it fire up and then we'll talk about what it does or doesn't do, right? Go! So, here we have its initial start where it should prime, hopefully prime. Come on now. This is the bit we're working on at the moment. Getting it to start relatively smokeless. And without backfiring, it's always a bonus. Which is a... Uh, not a challenge. Well, that's a challenge. This is, this is the good bit. This is the... We've got it running as a shower. Now we just need to get it running. Starting. Not, it always starts. I just want it to start with less smoke. It's going. It is going, honest. It's... It's getting there. It's cold this morning. It's a... Uh, this is a stonest cold. I think it's like 9 degrees outside just now or something. This might smoke a bit on start because it's not a perfect start this time, but it's getting there. It's it's nearly it's nearly started. That's it. So if when I say instant hot water, it's not quite instant hot water, but it's not as fast as a propane here. But the advantage of this is you don't need propane; it'll just run from your your standard diesel feed. And you can see this is a little bit smoky. Oh, I assume you can see this is a bit smoky. Can you even see? Can you see smoke? There's a little bit of smoke. But this is just because I haven't got the initial start burn dialed in just perfectly. But it will catch. Why are my exhaust temperatures backwards? Okay, 
It is lit, it is running. The shower is on behind me. Increasing burn. Uh, I'll just talk amongst myself here while it... See, it's still a bit smoky, so it's still having to burn off the smoke that I put in in its pre-stage, but that's okay. We're working on that, I'm working on it. It's now speeding up to maximum uh, run temperature, and it's uh, doing a warm shower. I will spin the camera around in a moment to show you warm water. Okay, that's it, running at its maximum for the moment. That's what we've got. Uh, see if I can do this without kicking everything in the little orbit. Oh, here we go. Right, let's spin this around and see the shower this time. That's it, kick, kick, kick the tripod a few more times. Here is the said shower. Look at that. That is a warm shower. It's not, it's not roasting hot, it's just warm. Well, of course, we still haven't done the thing where we need to wrap the inlet pipe around the exhaust to preheat the water before it goes into the van stove because then we should be able to get it the water a lot hotter so the pump can run harder and actually get like a good, a solid uh, pressure out of your shower and have it running. But at the moment, this is, I, I would say that is a pretty decent shower and it's, well I think the thing's, what is this uh, thing say, 30? 32 degrees, which is not bad from 9 degrees inlet water temperature. And the heater's running now, smokeless, no smoke. Still thundering away. And shoot, oh, I don't, don't know how many layers it's used, but it's draining that tank pretty fast. And you can see the steam coming off the water, but I think, like I say, it's 9 degrees outside. And we've got, well, the water temperature is continuing to increase because it still has to heat up the mass of the heater. It's got quite a lot to heat up, but once it's done that, the software modulates the pump voltage, which modulates the speed of the pump. So if you can see on the things, it's at 90% of pump power. So if we can get the water even hotter again, we can get the pump going at full speed and you'll have a nice strong shower. Hey. So what's that? Fuel pumps are at 7.9 hertz and the fan speed's at 95. And you'll notice now that the exhaust temperature has stopped at 150, because in with this sensor and this code, it only reads up to 150 and then just stops. So let me turn this off just now and we shall talk about it. You just hold the button for five seconds and then it shuts down. There you go. Shower's off, stops pumping fuel, keeps running the fan until the exhaust temperature falls away through the floor. If the water was too hot, it would still run the water, but it might do it. You might, I might get to see it kick in if the, there you go. So I've got to 44 degrees, 45. It turns the water pump on a little bit just to stop it boiling inside the heater. Runs a glow plug, burns off any remaining fuel. And, and then it shuts down once the exhaust temperature gets below 70, I think it is. Is it 70? It's something like that. It runs till it's cool. Nah, uh, but that's, that's, that's where we are so far. Uh, so, a few things to do in here is get the priming and starting better. It does what it, well, don't get me wrong. It does work, it will light every time. I would just like it to light with as little smoke as possible, because let's face it, if you're on a campsite or whatever, you don't want to be fogging the whole place in the morning when you're having a shower. Uh, the other thing to do is, I want to test all its possible failure modes. So like, if you forget to turn the tap on for the water and turn it on, will it run until it boils? What happens when it runs out of fuel? Actually, I know what happens when it runs out of fuel, it just stops at the moment. It, and until it sees that the temperature of the exhaust has dropped and then it eventually goes into shutdown. But these are all the, I want failure modes that are going to stop people getting scalded or burnt. I, I want it to shut down in as safe a controlled manner as it can, but without burning or scalding MD. Right, let me just stop this recording. Stop, please. 
Hopefully that saved that somewhere useful. Hopefully that even worked. Uh, okay. Eh, what else would I like to say about the... Oh, our, our plans for this are to have Make It Yourself. So eventually we'll have the, on my website, I will put the board, whatever files it is you need to build your own board or fucking pictures and uh, components list, a BOM, I'm not going to say it without saying BOM because no doubt YouTube will demonetize it. Uh, the, the, you know, the bill of materials for all the bits you'll need to make this, uh, but you will have to DIY it because I don't think the liability of having me or somebody else make the boards and then sell them because if something bad were to happen to you like your van burns to the ground or you're horribly scarred for life in some weird accident the liability is not worth the small you know cost not cost uh, profit you might make from making a board and there's no way around that to say oh if you make it sure if you buy this it's your own fault what you do with that and that doesn't work in law if I sell you it's my problem but if you make it it's your problem and because I don't know what you're going to do with it or how you've modified it in any way, shape or form. So that's what we'll do. Make it yourself. Oh hell, if you want to take the things and make them and sell them and deal with the liability, you, you batter in. You do that. I don't, I don't want that, that shit. Uh, so, this is where we are so far. Not a very long video today because it works. It's, this is just an update video on how we are progressing. Next stage is new sensor for the exhaust temperature, so we get a more accurate, more better reading with it on the exhaust. And I want to explore wrapping the exhaust in copper to try and extract heat from it. If anyone has any tips on that now, I don't want to be wrapping brake pipe sized pipe around about it because that's a really low flow and you're going to end up with a shitty shower with that amount of flow. If anyone knows how to bend bigger copper without kinking the tube into a kinky, tubey mess of copper, that would be ideal if you could let me know. Do that. Any thoughts and suggestions as well? Any failure test modes you can think of to employ into our uh, testing regime? That would be awesome as well. And any other thoughts you have on this? Uh, and then, well, at some point I'll bring you back again once we've implemented our changes and added more things to it. But for now, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.